privilege of being able to have, uh, you know, NFL coaches all around me. And especially with having coach Harbaugh who has coached in the NFL and has led his team to a Super Bowl. And uh, he obviously knows what it takes to win. He's led very good pros. And uh, we were all thankful here to kind of be a part of a program that was run like an NFL uh, organization in terms of discipline, uh, scheduling, uh, how to be successful, what it takes to win. So all those things that I learned here in my five years really helped me. You know, when I was going in through this training, which was, okay, what do I got to do to get better? I know how to get better now. It's do I have the discipline, the routine and uh, the commitment to doing so. So I'm very thankful that I was able to, you know, have a coach like him who's been able to be so successful in the NFL as well as college. And uh, it's really helped me just prepare, you know, taking this next step into that transition. And just a quick follow up. Uh, what you can talk about, the, the, you talk so much, so good about Coach Harbaugh. What you can talk about the relationship that you have with him during all these years? Uh, it's definitely been a, a, a great uh, relationship, just being able to have a coach that you can go up to and talk uh, football with uh, and just learn because um, he's got so much knowledge about the game and uh, not only has he coached it, but he's played it and he's played in big games before. So it just adds a whole nother aspect, another layer to it that you're just, you know, it's a privilege to have for sure. Thank you. Good luck. Thank you. Angelique. Carlo, Aiden said that he tried convincing you to come back for your like 15th season for Michigan. I was just wondering, did you did you give that some thought? I mean, of course, it's hard, uh, you know, to make that decision just because of all the friends, the connections you have, uh, the memories, um, and especially, you know, the ones that you make while you're here. Um, of course, that thought crosses your mind all the time and having the opportunity to, you know, have that because usually you don't have that opportunity where, you know, kind of at the end of the season, the season's over. Um, but for us, because of uh, COVID rules, you know, there was that opportunity that presented itself. And it was definitely something I thought about. And uh, at the end of the day, the best decision for me was to, you know, kind of take this next step. And um, but you know, during those times where I was deciding it was never, uh, you know, definitely an easy decision at the beginning of, you know, do I come back or do, do I take this next step? Um, it's hard to leave. It's hard to leave all those guys. And um, uh, it's definitely a tough decision and definitely one I thought about a lot. If I could follow up, Carlo, um, you know, taking this next step, what have you heard from NFL teams and, you know, where do you think you're going to be drafted and, and uh, what kind of input are you getting? Um, it's just, you know, anytime you get the opportunity to talk to a coach, it's definitely something uh, that you appreciate and you value. I uh, obviously in my head, you know, I got a good idea. I think where I'm going to, you know, end up being uh, come around draft time, um, you know, I think that's really all that it comes down to just because there's a whole bunch of people. Uh, there's a lot of things that you read or there's a lot of things, you know, that especially around this time, everybody's got their input on where you're going to go. Um, and I don't think it really matters because at the end of the day, the only thing that matters is what happens on the actual day. Um, no one kind of knows, you know, where they're exactly be picked, but in my head um, and in my heart, I, 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 know where I'm going to, you know, end up and uh, I'll be okay uh, with how that goes. The next question here is from Isaiah. Hey, Carlo, we've uh, heard, you know, hear all the time about some of the up and coming defensive linemen, whether it be Donovan Jeter or Chris Hinton, who, who stands out to you as those guys that are really to, ready to step into your shoes or take that next big step uh, <clears throat> coming season I mean um the good thing about you know where that Michigan defense is and that Michigan D-line is as a whole is they're retaining a lot of very good players that you know not only have played a season but have played you know two seasons under their belt um you know you of course you've got Aiden Hutchinson who I think we all know what a great you know player he is but you know it's going to be awesome to see 
Uh, and for a lot of people that don't know all the behind the scenes work he does, you know, as a leader and a captain for this team, um, you know, he was a captain last year and uh, I'm assuming, you know, he'd probably, you know, receive that role going into next year um, just because of what he does for this team and how much he means to this team and uh, all the players relationships with him. Um, and then you've got, you know, pe players like, uh, Taylor Upshaw, who got to step into that role last year with uh, with Aiden going uh, down with an injury and just him being able to, you know, get more games under his belt and him being able to, you know, play in games and make big plays for us last year is really going to help him going forward. Uh, Jeter has always been a great player for us and just him having a whole nother year again to just go out there and compete and play. Uh, he's I'm excited to see him get to play. Chris Hinton has always been a great, great player for us, even when he was young as a freshman. And now coming into his th third year, I think for him, he, you know, he demands and expects a lot out of his play. And I think we all do too, because that's the type of player he is and the type of caliber, uh, you know, player. I think we all think he can be, and we know he can be, he's shown it, you know, ever since his freshman year, it's uh it's a big accomplishment and it's something, you know, a lot of people got to remember that, you know, to come in and play, you know, D line at any school as a freshman is a huge thing. And we all got to see Chris do that. And, you know, had a great sophomore year and now going into this third year, I think uh, it's going to be awesome to see him just kind of build and continue off that. And I've got to see Mozzie uh, too. And uh, the way Mozzie looks is just, uh, he looks awesome. And I'm just excited to get to see him play this year. And I mean, the list goes on. I mean, we got to see Gabe, you know, get into games last year as well. And he's a player that I don't think uh, many people have even got to see play yet, but it's like, you know, you see him here in practices all the time and just how well he does every single day. And it's just like, I know he's, he's foaming, you know, at the mouth to go out there and, you know, get on the field and just be able to, you know, help this team out, help his teammates play. And uh, uh, I mean, I'm excited for these guys, you know, and that's one of the things that, you know, going back to the questions where it's like, did I think about, you know, think about coming back? Of course. I mean, all these players that are still here and how good they're going to be. And you, you want to be a part of that. You want to play with them. And uh, even, you know, one guy I didn't even mention is David Ojabo, who we, uh, who we've all seen here develop for two years and not uh, really get to be on the field yet, you know, going into this third year, you know, I know his mindset is he just wants to go and he just wants to play. And we've seen some things that he can do that are just like, man, the, you know, the world's got to see this stuff. So I'm really excited for this, this, you know, this team. And, you know, like I've said, I mean, there's so many good players on that D line and uh, getting, another year and hopefully this year get to have a full season with you know the the full the full go 12 games uh it's going to be awesome for these guys to get to have that this year the every other question person angelique <laughs> carlo you have some um nfl family members have you used that resource as you prepare for this next step uh, of course. I mean, uh, definitely it's been used, uh, you know, in a different way just because now, you know, I'm at that point or I'm in that, you know, that, that time period where, uh, it's a little different. Now I have an opportunity or a chance to, uh, you know, potentially go to the next level and play or be on a team or whatever my next step looks like. And, um, you know, I'm just very thankful that I've always had this relationship that I have with, you know, both of my uncles. Uh, they've been instrumental in just giving me, you know, what it takes, what it looks like, uh, what I need to do, the, the certain types of drills I should be practicing, uh, learning from some of the, you know, the great players that I've got to watch play and they've had the ability to coach. So it's definitely, definitely been uh, very awesome. And I'm very privileged that I get to have, you know, two NFL coaches, uh, that have been in the NFL for many, many years, uh, been on very good teams, coached very good teams and good players. And, you know, have that, you know, at a phone call, a text message length. Um, so I'm very thankful for that opportunity. 
So Dave doesn't have to call on me again, Carlo. I was just wondering, um, going back to Michigan, did, when you saw the shakeup on the defensive staff, Don Brown um, no longer part of the, the team, did you think that it was time for Michigan to have some maybe new life on the coaching staff defensively? Um, new life? Um, I don't. I don't know if I would uh, describe it as new life uh, just because, you know, coach Brown was enough energy for, <laughs> I mean, what a whole, a whole state in terms of the energy he would bring and how fired up he was, he is and the energy that he would bring. Um, so in terms of new life, no, I don't think so. I mean, coach Brown was, you know, I'm so thankful that I got to have a coach, at his caliber and have a coach for my entire time here. Uh, that's something special when you get to have a coach your entire career and not have to, you know, have to go through a different coaching change every two years, every one year and being able just to be able to learn under him and play in his scheme. And uh, we were very successful under coach Brown. Uh, you look at all the players that he was able to develop and put into the NFL along with our success as a defense. Um, some of the best years of defense, that I've ever, you know, watched or been a part of were part of Coach Brown. And I'm very thankful for that. And, uh, you know, I was very thankful that I got to play under Coach Brown for sure. But in terms Last of new life, I think, yeah. you know, Coach Brown definitely had, has enough life for <laughs> many people's lifetimes. <laughs> <laughs> Our last question here for uh, Carlo is from Aaron. Carl, you, you mentioned earlier, you mentioned the versatility and, and obviously you were asked about the pick six, the hula bowl. What, what's your message to NFL teams? What, what, what do you want them to know about you? Uh, I guess what I want them to know about me is, uh, you know, right now where I'm at in my career and, you know, just how I'm feeling. I'm just, I'm just a guy that's got a lot of energy kind of deep inside him that, you know, feels some type of way about certain things. And he just kind of wants, you know, his opportunity just wants his chance to go out there and just show what he can do. And um, that's really all I got to say.